Anyway. Improvisation time, y'all. Okay, so what we're going to do is, first of all, your boy is going to make sure that he has the correct vocal input instead of having this echo going. <gasps> Boom. Do I sound like more of an actual person who's going to teach you how to do shit? Let's go. All right, fantastic. We are in the zone. It is improvisation time. Um, I haven't done a video of one of these for a bit, but I was just having a chat uh, with uh, Dylan. If you've seen him in the community, and he's like, hey, bro, do you have any chord progressions that I could improvise over? Because you said that ages ago that you like used to do that when you were in high school. And I was like, I sure do. So I want to keep like the progression of the improvisation going, but I want to start putting in some advanced concepts in a simple way. So give me feedback if this helps you. Um, what I want to do in this lesson is start to make you think about chord tones. Um, so... When we're improvising, I want you to keep everything that I've already talked about, um, which is like all the basic principles. And I'm just going to be banging out like a bunch of progressions for you guys over the next like day or two. You're just going to see like there will be like four or five videos. So if you're following the school module, by the way, I'm Luan. I live stream. If you're new here, um, we have a free music school. And this is where this lesson is going to be found. It's part of the improv improvisation course that I have. Um, so... What I want to do is I want to get you about like five or six different kind of jams and get you guys jumping in on this. So this jam is a very simple jam. Um, it's a three chords. It's an F major seven that goes to an A minor 11 and then it goes to a G. Um, so it's a four, six, five. Um, and you're going to be soloing an A minor pentatonic, which we've already done. So you guys are quite comfortable with that. Um, you can just play an F major chord, an A minor chord, and a G chord if you just want to do this um, without all the fancy tensions that I add. Um, now, the little concept that I'm going to go over is, is something we call chord tones. So it can get very wild right away, but I don't want you guys to think about it being very wild just off the, right off the bat. Um, basically, what happens is if I play a certain chord, and I'm playing in the minor pentatonic, right? So you don't have to memorize this right now. So I've got my A minor pentatonic. Wicked, right? So say I was going to play an F chord. So an F chord is here. What that F chord is going to do, it's going to highlight a couple of notes in the minor pentatonic. Those no two notes right there. So those three there are all notes that fit over an F chord. Um, and there's a couple of extra jam, extra beautiful notes that sit there, which is notably the F note itself. And that's what we're going to be adding to the pentatonic. So normally we go, um, so A minor pentatonic starting on the E string, you're going 5, 8, 5, 7, 5, 7, 5, 7, 5, 8, 5, 8. And then what we're going to do here is on the B string, we're going to add a 6. So you're going to go 5. So we're adding the natural minor scale. So this is a couple of theory things, but I don't want you to get wild on it. All I want you to know is 6th fret on the B string, when you play an F chord, it sounds dope. And then essentially what we're doing is when a chord is played, certain notes in the pentatonic in your brain are going to highlight and be like, hey, if I hit these notes, they are the exact notes that are being played in the chord. So you can either run into them, you can start on those when the chord's being played, but if you are aware of where these chord tones are, so these notes that are within the chord that you're playing in the scale, um, they are going to help cue your brain. Like they're gonna they're gonna show that you know what's going on. You're you're following the chord progression. Um, sometimes this can sound really really academic and nerdy and sound really garbage. In my opinion, I don't like it. Um, but if you can do it tastefully, it shows that you have learned how to marry musicality. And then you have used your knowledge of harmony to be able to like inspire even more creative and more melodic ideas. So that's all we're doing. So remember the first rule every time we get into improvisation, listen to the groove. So this is semi inspired by Let Me Love You by Mario. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know that song. But anyway, we got boom, doom, doom, um, 
so there's just like this really cool like offbeat thing that I've got going on this groove. Um, now when I play the four, when I play the the F chord, which is the four chord, uh, the sixth fret on I'm, I only want you to pick one note, which is going to be the root note of these things um, of these chords. So we got the F note here, which is sixth fret B string, is going to light up for me. So if, if, if as soon as we hear this, I know that is a banger. Straight up banger. It's gonna sound great. So you heard how that just straight away fit in. Now, if I go to the next note, it's either gonna be an A, because I'm playing an A minor chord. So I can either play it on the fifth fret E string or I could play it on the on the tenth fret B string. So we got And now obviously we're going to a G, so you just go down a whole step. To the uh, to the eighth fret on the B string, and then we got that one. So it's it's a bit complicated, and I'm trying to condense it into a simple format. So I either hit it or I don't hit it. But basically, we got an F major chord playing. That means we hit an F note. And we got an A minor chord playing. We hit an A minor. And we get a G. We play a G note. And then you want to think about like, all right, I'm playing my pentatonic, but I'm going to aim for the F when I hear the F. Pentatonic scale, A when I hit the A, pentatonic scale, G when I hit the G. So we got. You can see how it has like this really, really cool melodic flow to it. Um, and that's just me picking those notes. Now, you don't have to be crazy fancy about this. You don't have to be like, oh, I'm going to go wild with like, I need to know every single chord tone and hit them. One thing you might have noticed is as I did the first like couple of passes, I was like really strict on hitting the chord tones. Um, but then what I did was like, you can alternate, like you don't have to do it all the time. You can be like, all right, well, on this F chord, when I know the F chord's about to happen, I'm gonna play the F and then I'm just gonna vibe in my pentatonic scale and just have fun. So then you have like one chord that you're intentional on and then you just do your, you just see where that creatively leads you. And then when you wanna like pick another chord, you're like, oh, the next G chord, I wanna, I wanna see if I can lead to the G. And so like, I'll do one pass. So I'm gonna do three chord, chord progressions and one chord progression, I'll focus on the F chord. The second chord progression, I'll focus on on the G chord, and the third pro chord progression, I'll focus on the A minor. So it sound like this. If you can pick it up, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I, I started on my F chord and I just vibed. And I vibed all the way onto the second progression when I hit a G note. And then I really hammered in on the G note. And then on third progression, when I heard that A minor, I really leaned in on the A minor. Um, so that is kind of where you can build like this really strong connection harmonically. So we have this term prosody in the songwriting course. You can have a look at it. Um, and it's basically all elements work together to achieve a specific outcome. So the more elements in improvisation that you can connect with, whether it's the rhythm, it's like the very first one is like playing the right key. That's the only thing that the pentatonic scale serves as like a, as a framework, as in like you are now playing in the right key. Boom. That's one element that is working. A lot of people stop there. They're like, all right, cool. I'm playing. As long as I play a pentatonic scale, I'm good. And it's like, that's not what we're about. We're not about that that life. 
I don't know if you noticed, but I wasn't sitting there going like. That is not music. That's just playing scales. Um, so that like really clever scale combinations, they're fine if you're like tapped on music. Like if you're super musical, cool. But um, then go there and do that. Go down that path. But a lot of people really need to focus on the music element first. So first element that's going to be working with the music is being the right key. So that's playing the right scale, A minor. Now the next part's going to be like, have you got the rhythms? Have you got the dynamics of how it's going? Have you got a tension resolution map in your head of like, where am I going to build tension? Where am I going to create resolution? Where am I going to build this flow in the song? So remember... That's the core concepts that we want to do. And now I'm just adding these chords of you being like, all right, well, I know he's playing an F chord. So that means when he plays an F chord, I know that I can play six fret on the B string. Wow, sounds great. And then I know when he plays an A minor chord, I can play 10th fret on the B string and I've got an A minor. And if I hear a G chord, I can play the G note, which is going to be on the eighth fret of the B string. And so you can use that knowledge to further enhance that that stuff. So that's that's it for the theory portion of, of this little tutorial. But let's get into some improvisation. So if you want to jam with me, um, it's F, A minor, G. So you could do an F chord, A minor, G like that. And if you want to be really, really fancy, which is I like, I like doing this, I like doing tensions for more advanced people, um, F major seven, A minor 11, and you could do like a G13. Oof. I love that bat. It's very, very cool. All right. So we're going to give it one pass. I'll do one pass out of me improvising. And then I want you guys to jump in. And ha you so you're going to get a warm up. I'll try and keep it as simple as possible for the beginners. And then we can get wild as we go on. So let's get it going. Three, four, and Get ready to take it away. One, two, you guys go in now. Mm. Keep it going, keep it going, going, yeah. Cool. So you, if you got a chance to play it, um, you would know that it's like, ah, oh, this is a bit weird. I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to play another pass. And when you play this pass, I want you to just sit down and think, okay, I got my pentatonic and do like a little bit of like a, some framework um, things and like get comfortable, especially around these top three strings of going to the chord tones and then where the pentatonic is, then chord tones, pentatonic, chord tone, pentatonic. So like this. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. You want to get a bit of a, you want to jump in with a plan. You don't want to just like YOLO in. So we got that rhythm. So we're just going to vibe out on that bad boy and we're just going to have a good time. So I'll come in first and you guys can get a feel. And then I want you to remember, we're going to do two passes. I don't want you to guys go crazy and just like looping, looping, looping. I want you to do two passes where you're going to come in and you're going to play and um, the you're going to build a solo in the first pass and then you're going to have a big climax at the start of the second progression and then you're going to kill your solo. So I'll show you an example of how it goes. So we're going to start with a build. So you see how it had that, it had like a, a good, nice little flow. I don't want you guys to be sitting there just soloing mindlessly for ages. I need you to have a purpose. You need to jump in, get an idea, 
finish an idea and then move on and then do it again. And you, as long as you practice the muscle of creating ideas and finishing ideas and then iterating, iterating on those ideas and then finishing those ideas, you're going to start building a really great vocabulary of improvisation and solos. So let's give it a shot. One, two, come in, chill and go. Build it up. Build it up. Build it up. And your climax comes in now. Get ready to close your idea. Close your idea. Now my turn. So hopefully that was pretty fun. We got to have our little like back and forth jam. Um, just for you guys now, I'm just going to play the loop. Um, so you guys can have, I, I want to make sure that when you do your practice, you do the intentional like call and response with me. Um, and then if you want to use this as like a, just a jam track and you can sit there for like 15 minutes and solo if you want to, um, then I'm going to make this available for you. It also helps our algorithm, the hacks, yo. Um, and helps me get paid and so I can do this full time. The dream. Now, um, if you notice when I was doing those call and responses, um, I did two, like, I don't know how focused you guys were on it, like depending on how many times you watch this video. But the the first time I was like kind of yoloing, just figuring it out. The second time I did a solo, I believe I did like a, I was thinking more about like the duration of the notes. So I was doing like long notes and then my climax was more like short notes and then I came back towards long notes. Um, and then the, the third one, which is the one I liked the most, um, I started focusing on pitch being the, the difference between tension and resolution. So a lot of you will be like, oh, he was doing this thing in the scale, but that's not actually what I was thinking. I wasn't thinking about scale. I was thinking about pitch and I was thinking about rhythm. Um, the notes that I happened to hit just happened to hit. And I have a lot of muscle memory of, of knowing what will work. Um, uh, cause I've just been doing it for a long time. But when I did the pitch one, you could see as I got towards the climax, I was up really high in the register and then I pulled back and that's how I closed it. So I built up from low up to high, high was the peak and then I brought it back down. You don't need to do everything, but as you get really, really good, you're going to start picking up on everything and then everything combined, when you've got multiple layers of tension and res resolution happening, oh my God, you're going to be like absolute savages and I'm going to be so proud of you guys once you get to that point. Um, but for the beginners out there, don't be afraid, like just pick one thing that you know you can control and then do that. Don't be, don't be thinking that the scale is the thing that is making me do what I do. The scale is truly the most minimal aspect. Obviously there's going to be tonal things that you'll hear that I do melodically. You'll be like, Oh, that note sounds so good. And it's like, but it's not the actual note pitch. That is what's going to be driving, um, what you're interested in. It's like, it's everything that I've done to set that up. And there are a lot of those things are the things that you just can't, like, unless you really look at it, you're like, oh, I wasn't actually thinking about that. I was, because the pitch is the easiest thing to cling to. The scale is the easiest thing to be like, that must be the reason. And it's like, it's no, it's the pitch. It's creating the tension resolution and setting yourself up for it. Anyway, let's get a, uh, give it a go. I'm going to just play the track and I'm going to alternate and give you guys some space to mess around. I'll, I'll have like a, no bass and I'll have, I'll just mess around and see if I can have fun with this loop pedal. But yeah, have a good time everyone. And thank you so much for watching this video. Let's see you guys shred some solos. One, two, three, go.
Hope that helps y'all. So keep improvising, keep shredding. Uh, let me know in the comments on YouTube if you're watching it on YouTube. But if you're in our school community, please post videos of your soloing on the school community. Um, if you learn how to post an unlisted video, I can give you feedback. And um, yeah, jump on in. Have a good shred. And I can't wait to see you guys absolutely killing it with your solos. I'll be pumping out way more of these videos for you guys. Um, so just give me feedback on what you like. Um, and if you just want me to just like start making just... I'll make a couple of different styles and then whatever you guys like the most, I'll do. So, all right, let's rock and roll.